Okay, I apologize in advance, but this may be a boring video to some people here. It's specifically regarding the Android screen mirroring videos that I put up. I had an idea and I figured I'd throw it out there. Maybe someone can develop the idea, maybe I'll play around with it, but you know, at the very least, uh, I just want to put it out there in case it inspires some people. Maybe you guys, one of you guys can help uh, me figure it out. But basically what I figured was, so let's go into a bit of theory here regarding CAN bus. Just one sec. So in any of my coding or flash programming videos, I show this cable. The K plus D CAN USB interface cable. Basically, it connects to your OBD2 port and it works on high-speed and low-speed CAN bus. So on any modern car, um, you know, from the last 10 years or so, they had two types of uh, CAN bus. They had low-speed, which is going to be D-CAN, and then they have high-speed, which is K-CAN. So it's basically, CAN stands for Control Area Network. It's basically like a small LAN inside your car. All the modules inside your car uh, connect on the central network and they communicate on either of the buses either the high-speed CAN bus or the low-speed CAN bus at least this is how I understand it and so far I think I'm right so KCAN is a higher baud rate or a higher bit rate to carry more information more quickly and it's reserved for the more important modules like your engine control computer your transmission control all of all the vital systems that keep your car running and then there's a secondary network. It's a twisted pair of wires that uh, are um, leading up to every module in the car. So you can make any module really talk with any other module if you really wanted to. But the theory is this, that uh, high-speed CAN bus gets priority over low-speed CAN bus, always. If you ever notice on one of these cars, let's say you start your car... You start driving off and you didn't even give the iDrive a minute, like 30 seconds to load up. If you change one of your tracks or you, you, you roll the volume up or down, if you've ever noticed there's a lag or a delay, uh, that's unfortunate, but it's on the low speed CAN bus. It gets low priority. The high priority stuff is going to your engine and whatnot. Imagine when you turn your volume knob and you know how sometimes you get that 30 second delay, even worst case. Imagine if that was happening with your engine, it would stall. It has to get priority. It has to be on the high-speed CAN bus. It has to get the fastest bit rate available so that everything can work together properly. But all the non-critical stuff, like like changing your volume, uh, muting your um, sound, um, all these controls, um, seat heaters, running the, the rear blinds, changing volume, changing tracks, all that stuff has to go through the CAN bus on low speed for interior features, right? So, I, th I just thought about it. In theory, I'm like, okay, people that are watching my Android screen mirroring uh, video and w don't have 6FL, but they want what I had there, where I'm changing tracks, muting and pausing my music just like that, and it kind of feels like it's seamless and part of the car. I was looking for a simple way for you guys to have that if you don't have the hack that I've done, which is basically tapping into your USB 6FL package via this Bluetooth adapter. You know, it's not the most common feature. Your car would have to be, like, loaded for it to have that, and this car happens to be loaded, therefore it luckily had that. Um, but, so, the idea is this. I said, okay, wait, so I have this cable that has high speed and low speed CAN bus. I'm like, one of these pins is your low speed CAN bus, right? Normal scan tools don't really communicate with the CAN bus. They just get error codes through um, communication wires and they're not dealing right on the CAN bus. But on a BMW, your OBD connector is there. Technically speaking, if we were to have a way to intercept the signal. So when I press this, it, there's literally network protocol going through the signal is getting passed from my steering wheel control to the head unit via low speed CAN bus. And you should be able to intercept that and use that information. That's exactly what's happening with 6FL. 6FL is literally a module that's running Linux and that's why you can stick a USB key into it. It's just meant to run your MP3 
programs, uh, run, play your MP3 piles, um, and show your iPod on your iDrive, right? That was kind of advanced for when this car came out, like nine years ago. It's the norm now, but the idea is what, when I send this command from the steering wheel, I'm pushing it through to uh, my deck, just like all you guys can. But what's unique about the, the 6FL packages is it takes that input, the, the deck actually communicates with the 6FL module and the 6FL module says, oh, okay, you, you asked to change tracks. I better tell that iPod about that. Or I better uh, let the, you know, whatever um, music device you're using. There's a generic protocol that allows it to push that command. And then because this is Bluetooth based, it pushes the command to your phone. And it's, I'm changing tracks wirelessly. You guys would want that. You can easily mimic my screen mirroring project if you had iDrive if we there's a way to take the signal from here not by pushing it through the 6FL package but another way to change your tracks and I thought about it I'm like logically speaking there is a way I'm like this is simple I had bought this from my E46 ages ago it was just a cheapy little I think it was like I think you can get these for six to twelve bucks it's an ELM 327 Bluetooth adapter back in the day I was using this just to get diagnostic codes off of my um, off my car with my smartphone and I thought it was cool that it was wireless but I'm like wait a bit, minute these ELM Bluetooth adapters they communicate on CAN bus they actually have all the pins there so people have used these to sniff their uh, CAN bus on the car and kind of trick the car to do things you know this is not a very high speed device but for a simple command of grabbing your uh, change track uh, command from your steering wheel or pausing your music, um, it can handle that no problem. It's a very low amount of data needed to do that. So I thought about it. I'm like, wait, so if you were to just remove your diagnostic connector cover here and just shove this in here, just like that, right? And I don't even know if, I don't know if you can get away with putting this cover back on. I doubt it because it's kind of popping out a little bit. Yeah, that's not going to work. Maybe if you really want to, you could shove a bit of tape behind there so that it's nearly flush, right? That wouldn't be so bad. You can barely even notice it. But what could happen here is I'm like, okay, if that is a thing, if you can communicate via Bluetooth to your smartphone and intercept a steering wheel command from your car and... Uh, take that command via Bluetooth to the phone and let that phone push a command to Spotify or, or to Android Auto, maybe that's a thing. That was my logic behind uh, making this video. And then I said, okay, wait, let me search for that. I just put in a few keywords. I typed in CAN bus, ELM327, steering wheel control, Android app. I just wanted to see if it existed <laughs> because I thought that could be cool. So, funny enough, someone actually made this it was like an open source thing right here maybe hard to get this to focus here but car bus interface i think it was inspired originally for jeeps and whatnot but then they made it for they kind of made it open source to work with anything you can define your bluetooth adapter and then see media pause play um next previous double tap volume up volume down so i think as far as i can understand this is open source enough that if you wanted to you can kind of write a custom code to this to make it generic enough to work with almost any car so that if you were to take your steering wheel command the bluetooth adapter is going to sense that exact bit of data the data set on the actual arbitration value for that command it's going to say oh okay they, you want to change tracks and then it's going to via bluetooth beam that to this app this app is going to live in the background and it's going to push to your uh push to your android auto kind of effectively what i'm doing with this because even coming up with this was kind of cool right it was just my idea and it happened to work out that your aux input stays live while you're still pushing data through through USB because it's meant to work as a Y adapter, right? You got your 
you have your aux and whatnot. So it's just kind of kind of tricking the car to get the job done. Same thing with this idea. Sorry, this is a long video, but it was a kind of I thought it was a smart idea. And I looked into it. Someone's already made an app that could make this possible. I'm just putting this out there. If you guys have any input or any suggestions, or you want to kind of contribute to this, I'll try it out. And um, if it works out, awesome, right? You guys have a ten dollar way. Stick that on, leave it there, forget about it, and you have Bluetooth uh, steering wheel controls. Even if you don't even want to do the whole screen mirroring jazz, if you don't care about any of that, you just want to be able to load up Spotify on your phone, leave it there, and just forget about it. Um, either connected via Bluetooth or just through your aux cord, literally physically connected to the phone, and you just want to be able to have a quick way of changing tracks. That would be pretty cool. Forget what's happening on the display. It's just like you want to be able to stream your music and change tracks from your steering wheel wirelessly. And you don't have 6FL. There you go. That's an easy way to do it. Potentially. Provided that app can be modified. You know, I don't know if some people are going to dislike this video thinking, well, show us if you're, before you talk about it. But I kind of have a solution on my car already and I'm happy with it. But I'm putting it out there if anybody else wants to help develop this or gets inspired by this video to try and play with that app and their Bluetooth adapter to see if they can get the change track command to make it to their phone. That is uh, what I'm going to play around with. And if you guys have any input, comment below. Send me a message. I'm going to spend some time probably on the weekend by trying to mo modify this uh this data. I think it's specific regarding, um, see here, that is um, your your data set, right? I think that's your arbitration. So as I was saying, that's, if you modify this information so that it's specific to the car, like specific to how this car pushes the command via the CAN bus, then um, you can modify, you can play around with this, hit OK, save it, and that's it, you're done. You'll, you'll have do gotten the job done. Um, what we can try is getting what's called a CAN bus sniffer, where you put it on, um, you basically connect your laptop, it has to run on Linux. I saw another video on YouTube, it was really cool, about hacking your car, basically. But you can load up the software that will like scan through all the stuff happening on your car at any given time and it will remove the stuff that's redundant and you can have it narrow in on particular changes you're expecting like a low speed CAN bus command you can tap this button and then watch a screen it's going to literally tell you okay here there's your values and here's what what you should change and it will correlate with the data that I was just showing you on this app to push um, signaling to and from your car right just the same way if you have active cruise control where if you press this that accelerates if you press it like that it basically floors the car if you pull down it de-accelerates if you pull hard it hits your brakes because literally this is a joystick my active steering can be controlled i can make the steering wheel move by itself if i really wanted to right like the kind of stuff you can do technically speaking even though this is a nine-year-old car is cool if, if you're crazy you could get a joystick in your hand and drive the car, hit the brakes and everything if you push data through CAN bus. Because at the end of the day, this is a big network and it's looking for inputs and outputs on different systems, high speed, low speed. And that's how a modern car works. So I'm sorry I'm babbling on, but maybe you, some of you guys will find this interesting, just how this all works. And when you use IMPA and you see all those random digits and when I'm coding, showing you how to change the voltage on your, um, on your um, angel eyes and to make them brighter you're literally modifying code that hexadecimal code and tricking the module to perform a different way than intended so if you want to intercept that data at any time you can and that's the idea behind someone making an app using a bluetooth adapter to change tracks pause your music and whatnot via um, bluetooth because you know conceptually speaking it works, obviously I'm doing it. So, you can do it directly from the OBD port if you played your cards, right? Anyway, if you guys like this video and you didn't consider it a boring but babbling video, then, you know, let me know. Um, and uh, I'm going to keep playing around with this if you have any input. Um, 
let me know. I'm going to play around with trying to modify or trying to sniff the car to get this data. I can probably do it just with this cable. Connect via the laptop, get my vitals as to what's happening when I press these buttons. Where's that data stored? And how can I input that into the app via Bluetooth and try to change tracks through the OBD2 port to my phone? So thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>